As guitar players, we're all constantly searching for ways that we can improve the tonality of our instruments. And the most obvious thing that we can do is usually modifying the bridge of our guitars. But I think a lot of you guys have fallen victim to the snake oil that's out there by buying products like brass bridge pins or the conversion kits where you actually you convert it from a pin bridge into a pinless bridge. And then there's the endless debate between bone saddles and composite saddles and plastic saddles and whether or not they make a difference. But what we're gonna do today is show you a way that you can use this simple $25 saw and really truly change the tonality of your guitar into the positive and make it better, as well as increase the longevity and the durability of the guitar. So let's get into it. session. <laughs> Alright, before we get into what I've drawn here on the whiteboard for you guys, I want to kind of all get us on the same page about bridges and why they are so important on the guitar. Um, a way to think of the bridge on your acoustic guitar is actually as a brace. It's, it is. It's a brace that's on the guitar is actually just on the outside. Instead of being glued to the inside of the guitar, it's glued to the outside. The really cool thing about it is because it's on the outside, we can actually modify it a little bit and help change the way the guitar sounds. The other thing about the bridge on your guitar is just like on a car, the only thing that touches the road on a car are the tires. So it doesn't really matter how powerful an engine you have. If you don't have good tires that get good grip, you're not gonna be able to transfer that energy into the road to get you to accelerate faster down the street. On, a, on an acoustic guitar, the only part of the string, or the only part of the guitar that actually touches the soundboard that transfers all of that string energy into the soundboard is the bridge. So it's incredibly important that we maximize its efficiency. And doing things like adding weight to it are gonna make it less efficient. And I think that a lot of people miss that point when they, they get into that debate about bridge pins and the converting them into brass bridge pins. Because I think intuitively you hear brass bridge pins and you go, oh yeah, I've dropped a piece of brass on the ground. I know what it sounds like. It's got that nice dingy, ringy sound to it. And so it's gonna make my guitar sound better. But you gotta think about like, you're probably doubling, tripling the weight of your bridge pins. And now that's all weight that it's gonna have to move even that much more weight to get the guitar to sound good. So you don't wanna do that. You want as lightweight and as efficient of a transfer of energy as possible into the top of the guitar. So that leads us to the easiest thing that we can do is change our bridge pins on our guitar from slotted to unslotted. So I wanna show you these little examples that we have here. Um, this is a slotted bridge pin. It might be difficult to see because it's black. Yeah. But you can see the slot that's inside of there. These are what are on probably 95% of the guitars that you guys at home own. They are what the manufacturers put inside instruments. And they are basically designed to make it easier for them to build the guitar. They basically drill the six holes for the strings to go in, supply you with unslotted bridge pins, and they're off to the races. But back in the day, they used to use unslotted bridge pins. The funny thing is these are actually easier to manufacture than the slotted bridge pins. So it's like a... a you know, you gotta pick which one's gonna be harder to do. But on an unslotted bridge pin, it's literally the exact same thing, but it just doesn't have a slot inside of it. Pretty self-explanatory there. There's so much more to it than meets the eye. I remember when I first read an article on this years ago when I got to building and I was like, well, how much of a difference can it make? And then I modified one of my guitars and it was just blown away by the difference that it made. So that'll lead us to our whiteboard. Let's talk about on the slotted bridge pin, which is gonna be, once again, most of you guys at home and your unmodified guitars that you have. If they're not custom built instruments, this is what you have. The string comes across here, breaks across the saddle, and then it falls into the slot on the pin. You know that from when you restring your guitar, you gotta like get it lined up and then push the pin in. Um, and then it follows that slot all the way down through the soundboard, through the bridge plate, and then kind of, presses up against the bridge plate and herein lies one of the big problems with the slotted bridge pins as you can see the ball end of the string is jammed up and it's actually kind of pushing itself this way into the bridge pin and it's only halfway sitting on the bridge plate so it's two things halfway on the bridge plate and then forcing this 
bridge pin to almost pivot in this direction. And those of you guys who have older guitars will know this because, if, especially if you've got plastic bridge pins, like something that's probably 10 plus years old, uh, back when I was doing repair work, you'd always pull these bridge pins out and they'd be so hard to get out. And you'd pull them out and they're like completely bent. Well, that's a testament to how much force is being exerted on that bridge pin uh, by the ball end of the string. And you gotta think, that's all energy that's wasted. That's energy that should be transferred into the top of the guitar. The other thing that it does, because it has to get all the way over to um, the slot on the pin before it can actually start to go down into the bridge, is you're gonna get a much shallower break angle right here. That break angle's, you know, hypothetically say that's, you know, I don't know, 30 degree break angle. So we have a, a lower break angle and we have less exertion of the forces into the top of the guitar. So then if we move over to the unslotted version, you'll see that there's subtle but also really big differences. So just like that one, obviously the string comes across the saddle, but what you'll notice is, look how much bigger this break angle is. It's probably 10 degrees larger. Um, because what it does is it breaks down into a slotted bridge. We're actually gonna slot the bridge instead of the pin. So it can actually break way earlier into here it's going to press up against this pin so you got solid contact the whole way in and then it actually comes through way down here through the bridge plate fully locked in to the to the um to the bridge plate of the guitar like you can actually on a properly installed unslotted bridge pin you can pull that that bridge pin out and you don't even lose pitch on the guitar the bridge pins kind of at that point almost just like an insurance policy um so what you end up with is those things, the brake angle. So that means that that string is touching the saddle for quite a bit longer. So you're gonna get better transfer of energy and all of the force that's being pushed up by the pull of the string is being exerted into the top of the guitar. So something really small like that, you're gonna notice is, is a really big difference. So this would be like the equivalent of going from a really skinny tire on a car to a much wider tire on a car. You've got a lot more contact surface area. So you're gonna be able to transfer the power down to the road. Same thing going on here with the guitar. You're gonna transfer that energy into the top of the guitar. So what we're gonna do, hopefully that gave you a good idea of what the differences are. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use that little $25 saw and convert half of the pins on this Taylor guitar into an unslotted bridge pin versus a slotted bridge pin and then you can see how easy it is to do and then also you'll visually be able to see it on one guitar what the difference is so we're going to do that next all right so what we have here is our notorious cut in half guitar and those of you that have watched our guitar breakdown videos who have been screaming at us about wasting a guitar that you assume we're throwing in the trash this is the beginning of you seeing that we're actually gonna be using these guitars for educational purposes for you guys. So we do not throw them away. There's a lot of really valuable information inside these guitars that is gonna go on for years and years for you guys. Um, and we do thank you guys for supporting us on Patreon, which allows us to be able to do these guitars, to be able to pay for the cost of buying a guitar to then review and then use for educational content for you guys. Uh, so moving on to how we're gonna convert this into a unslotted bridge pin. So as you can see, just like all tailors, uh, this is one of their lower end line guitars, so it does come with plastic um, bridge pins. The only difference between their higher end ones is they use the nice ebony pins. But I think you can see what I illustrated on that whiteboard there, um, how the string itself um, comes through and the ball end is kind of in the slot as well as kind of on the bridge plate. and. Um, you know, it's not fully in contact with that bridge plate. It's just not as good as it could be. And then on the other side, you can see how shallow of a break angle we have across there. It's not bad, uh, but we can make it better by using that, um, that slotting saw. And so what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to convert the, the three treble strings um, to a unslotted bridge pin, and then we're gonna leave these lower strings with slotted and then show you what they look like. So the first thing that we need to do here is pull out the bridge pins with my little little tool here. Obviously, I would need a better way to hold this guitar if it was a full on guitar. Um, and uh, let, me, let me loosen these strings up here. Get these strings out. Let's see. 
All right, so we're gonna pull those things out. Um, so Stumac and a, and a lot of the other guitar um, supply companies will sell these little saws, but this one they do sell on Stumac. It is uh, normally 30 bucks. It's on sale right now for like 25. Um, they come in two different gauges. They have the wider gauge and the thinner gauge, and they're designed so that you use the thinner gauge for like your E, B, and G string, and then you would use the wider gauge for the D, A, and E. Um, but what I tend to do is just use the slightly wider gauge for all of the different gauges. Um, so what we need to do actually is to, like I said, we're basically going to, instead of having the slot in the bridge pin, we need to slot the bridge itself. So what we'll do on your guitar is you'll use this, this is the wider gauge one, and you're gonna slide this in there and very carefully keeping the saw perfectly um, plumb, start cutting. Right now, I'm just focused on getting the initial cut. That's pretty good. I don't know if Matt can get a good shot of that, on what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So we've actually slotted that. We've slotted through the bridge, through the soundboard, and through the bridge plate. I'm gonna flip this over real quick, so hopefully we can see. It's a little little messy down here because of the, the, the poor quality maple, but you can see where our slot is here. I'm gonna go a little further with it so we can get a little bit more of a slot on that. We should get a little bit better. Yeah, so now we've got a nice little slot there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to begin to curve this slot this direction so that we get that better brake angle across the saddle. So we're actually going to now, I'm gonna to have to switch this around a little bit just because I'm right-handed. <laughs> and I'm going to come in here and slowly start working this this way. You wanna be very careful if you're doing this at home that you don't change where the center of that slot is because this will affect the string spacing at the saddle. So just be very careful that you keep your string spacing where it originally was. But we're just gonna slowly work our way, kind of rounding this over, trying not to, you do not wanna cut into your saddle, obviously. <laughs> this may seem quite barbaric, but this is how the sausage is made. Cool. So I think you can really drastically see there how much better that is looking. Oh, yeah. How much more we've got that slot um, set on there. Now the next thing that we would do if you're you're gonna need to change bridge pins, I will say this, this is a little fun hack, is you can get away with doing this without actually converting to unslotted bridge pins. You can actually just take your slotted bridge pin and turn it backwards and face the slot towards the tail piece of the or the tail block of the guitar. And so that's a kind of, a, if you're looking to save a few dollars, you can do it with the original uh, bridge pins and just do the slotted part facing the opposite direction. But I do recommend is that you go out and you find yourself. Uh, I use the Stumac Waverly brand um, bridge pins. I use these Catalbone ones because they look really good. They are negligibly more weight than ebony ones would be. If you're really looking to optimize the efficiency of it, use, use a wooden one that's really lightweight. But these ones should fit right inside most of the manufactured guitars. They sell them in a three degree and a five degree break angle. So you could look up online to find out which one fits the taper of your bridge pin slot. So that's, that's pretty important. But um, so what we're gonna do, uh, what I'm finding on this tailor, I thought that I might have to ream it, but I actually don't. It fits really nicely in there. Um, if you would need to re-ream it, you would need to buy a couple of reaming tools or just one based off of what um, taper angle you're going to do. The nice thing about buying your own and reaming them is you're going to get a perfect match between the taper on here and the taper on here and you're going to get that much better string contact between the whole system. But it looks like we're not going to need to do that. So what I'm going to do is just do these next two. We'll pop the strings in and put the, the unslotted pins in there and you guys will get a really good visual idea of how much of a difference it's going to make. Obviously, you won't get to hear it because this guitar doesn't have a back. <laughs> okay, so we've got all these slots put into the bridge. 
Once again, reiterating the fact that we are slotting the bridge instead of the pin. So what we need to do now is we're just gonna stick those three strings back on there and we should see quite evidently what the difference is. So we'll pop these, these in and, and just put a little tension on them. Obviously this guitar doesn't have the back on it. Um, so we can't go to, to full tension because it'll explode. <laughs> oh jeez. So we are switching out from those wa um, the original plastic uh, bridge pins to these Waverly Cattlebone ones, but you get the idea. They happen to fit in there really nicely. All right. Okay, so I'm super excited about this because I you can just see right out of the gate how much more of a break angle we are getting across the E, B, and G string. Look how much it just it immediately dives down into the bridge of the guitar versus these three strings, which don't have much break angle on them at all. And so to reiterate what we talked about on the dry erase board, especially on this G string, you can see how much longer how much longer of a distance is actually touching the saddle of the guitar. And that's important because that gives it more surface area to transfer energy and push down into the saddle versus these strings, which the string is only touching it for just a split second, basically at the apex and then shallowly breaking down into the bridge pin itself. So when we flip this over, you're going to see the secondary benefit over here on the, once again, these are our slotted, our unslotted bridge pins. These are the original ones. You can see how the ball end is sitting very, very nicely uh, in just fully sitting on the bridge plate of this guitar versus these unslotted ones, especially like here on the D string, how it's kind of like in the slot of the pin and only halfway sitting on the bridge plate. So it's gonna transfer that energy even more. I am noticing that these, these um, bridge pins are not fitting the slot perfectly. So this would be even better if we had the correct, these are five degree pins. We should probably be using three degree pins so that there's no, there's a little bit of a gap there that we should probably get rid of if we, if this was a real world example. But what I can do now too, is I can actually pull that out, pull that um, G string pin out and you can see that the, the, um, the ball end is just fully seated on the bridge plate, which is, that's just evident of how much of that string energy is being transferred into the top. So combined with the much larger surface area touching the saddle, as well as all of the string energy being captured in the top of the guitar instead of being pushed into the bridge pin, what you'll end up with, if you're paying attention, is a guitar that just has a little bit more of everything. It has more responsiveness, explosiveness of the note. I think the biggest thing you're gonna get is more sustain. Uh, and it's just gonna uh, exaggerate all of the good tonal qualities that your guitar has. And so, you know, you can get this saw for $25 on Stumac. We're gonna put a link, an affiliate link in the description of this video. You can pick it up. And like I said, if, you're, if you don't wanna spend any more money than that, you can just use this, this saw, turn your original bridge pins around and basically convert them to unslotted. If you really wanted to do it 100% the right way, I would recommend that you get this saw you get yourself some of those Waverly unslotted bridge pins and you get a, um, a bridge pin reamer. These are about $70. Um, I know it seems expensive, but you know, basically for $100, you're gonna be able to take your entire guitar and completely change how it sounds with actual proven you know, science behind it and kind of like, uh, yeah, duh, that makes a lot of sense instead of it being just this shot in the dark um, by putting some brass bridge pins on your guitar, which actually should probably make it sound worse. So I hope that you guys learned something from this video. And the, the cool thing is, is that it'll hopefully encourage you to not be afraid to make some modifications to your guitar. Let's not let all the electric guitar guys have all the fun. Us acoustic guys should be able to make slight mods to our guitar and improve them as well. So I hope you guys like this video. Share it with all of your guitar buddies as well. We thank everybody who has subscribed and will keep putting out the content. And as you can see, we're not wasting these guitars that we cut open in the guitar breakdown. So we'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks so much.